Good morning, Trenches Community Church family and friends. Welcome to our online gathering. We are so glad you joined us this morning to worship our King. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. The way we do this is through our E4 discipleship model. E4 will help you develop missional habits. Today, you will be equipped to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Equipped to engage your communities with the love of God on the unique platforms God has strategically assigned you to. Starting with your family, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. Equipped to enhance the kingdom of God, meaning wherever you are, life should be impacted by His presence working through you. As you practice these mission habits, we believe you will experience personal revival. This revival will cause you to encourage others of how God has worked in, for, and through you. So join us in worship. Grab your Bible and take notes as we endeavor to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit today. Enjoy. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that response. Man, again, this is a beautiful day and it's always good to see, you know, the family come together and worship our king. Say our king. Our king. Yes. So I was kind of meditating on today's service and, you know, why we gather. And it's a familiar passage of scripture that takes place in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 25. And I'm going to read that because I think at times we lose sight. We lose sight of why we gather, right? Why God has called us to gather together. And it says this, therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the, the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us say, let us. Let us. All right. We're going to get everyone engaged. Say, let us, let us draw near to God. So this is like a, a corporate passage of scripture. It's not an isolated scripture where we just draw near to God by ourselves. It's a collective effort. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to draw near to God together. Tell your neighbor, say, we're going to draw near to God together. So it says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promises faithful and then it says let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love all right so we're here today to stir up the love of god right so we're here to spread the love not just give love or receive love because often oftentimes we gather you know, and I, and I get it. I get it. It's like a movie theater. You go into a movie theater, right? And you want to sit in this area all by yourself, look at the movie, and then leave the theater, right? And sometimes that happens in church. We come to church, and we'll sit in our own little area, and as soon as the, uh, the ministry is over, we walk right out the door, right? And we haven't shared the love of God with any of our brothers or sisters, right? So he's telling us, when we come together, we want to stir up love. And then it says good works. So I want to be able, when I gather, encourage you in good works. What has happened in your life this week that you can encourage me by those good works, right? And then it says here, let us not um, give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing oh man that's a message right there but i ain't gonna preach that one but let us encourage one another so today i am here to encourage you and you are here to encourage one another you are here to stir up love and good works and one way 
that we can encourage one another is worship our king today because at times people they may come to the local assembly and they might not be feeling so good but they might look over at you and say man this girl is worshiping god and that's rubbing off on me so instead of my hands being down all right i'm about to lift my hands because my sister is lifting her hands. Oh, why is this brother over here dancing in the Lord? Yeah, you don't know why he's dancing in the Lord. Maybe he had a very tough week, right? And all of a sudden, the power got in him, so he started to two-step like Phil be doing on. You know, Phil be doing this, all right? So let's stand up today, this morning, right? And let's just go to the Lord together, right? Say together. Together we're going to go before the Lord right and we're going to ignite his presence in this place through our worship let's pray father we thank you for that term of endearment that we can call you daddy and we can approach you because you are our father and we are your children and we are our family Lord God, that have been born of you, born from you. So you said that you would inhabit the praises of your people, not just a person of your people. So as we worship you today, we're believing, Lord, that our worship is going to activate the manifestation of the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's start off with a corporate shout this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord beautiful? Hallelujah. I heard that yesterday somebody said he was beautiful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give him another shout, everybody. Hallelujah. Fire, fire, fall on us. Start a new revival. Fire, fall on us. Fire, fire, fall on us. Start a new revival. Fire, fall. Like it did on the day of Pentecost, rushing in like a mighty wind. Fill us up with your presence and your power, Lord, do it again. We are here crying out on one accord, let the heavens touch the earth. Coming like a passion in our hearts, and Lord, let it burn. Ooh, fire, fire, fall on us. Start a new revival. Fire, fall on us. Fire, 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 fall on us. Start a new revival. Fire, fall on us. All the way your glory and your grace you consume us with your love give us more and more of who you are we can't get enough Ooh, fire fire fall on us start a new revival fire fall on us fire 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 Just like he did it before, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like he did it before, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like. 
like you did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like you did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like you did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like you did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like. Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like you did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. I need the Holy Ghost. How many need the Holy? I need the Holy Ghost and fire. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. I need, I need the Holy Ghost. I need, I need the Holy Ghost fire. Fill me, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me, yeah. fill me with the Holy Ghost fire. I need, I need the Holy Ghost. I need, I need the Holy Ghost fire. Fill me, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me, fill me with the Holy Ghost fire. I need, I need the Holy Ghost. I need, I need the Holy Ghost fire. Fill me, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me, fill yeah. me with the Holy Ghost oh, fire. I need, I need the Holy Ghost. I need, I need the Holy Ghost fire. Fill me, yeah. fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me, fill me with the Holy Ghost fire. Just like He did it before. Lord, we are ready for him. Come on. Just like he did it before. Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like you did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Just like, just like we did it before. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Lord, we are ready for more. Lord, we are ready for more. Yeah, my soul said, yeah, 
I say yes. My soul say yes. I say yes. My soul say yes. Fill me.
this is where I'm meant to be. Me and you and you and me. I don't have to prove a thing. You've already approved of me. This is where I'm meant to be. Me and you and you and me. I don't have to prove a thing. You already approve of me. This is where yeah. I'm meant to be. This is where I'm meant to be. Me and you and you and me. Me and you and you and me. I don't have to prove a thing. I don't have to prove a thing. You've already approved of me. You've already approved of me. This is where I'm meant to be. This is where I'm meant to be.
could have a friend like you. I didn't know, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I can have a friend like you. I can call on you anytime. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. You know all about me and you love me anyway, yeah. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus, yeah. I didn't know. I can have a friend like you. I can take every burden. He's a burden bearer. He's a heavy load sharer. I can know I can have a friend like you. He's a mind regulator. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. He's a healer. He's yeah, a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. Oh, my joy comes. My joy comes from the Lord. Yeah. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I can have a friend like you. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know, yeah. I didn't know I can have a friend like you. Here's where the dead things, here's where the dead things come back to living. I feel my heart beat again. Here's where the dead things. Come back to living. I feel my heart beating again. The dead thing. Come back to living. I feel my heart beating again. Feel so good. Feel so good to know you are my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I had shared with my wife briefly and a few other individuals. Is recently I've been struggling in my prayer life. And I love praying. Could I be real? Right. I've been struggling in my prayer life and, and I've just been asking the Father like restore my my prayer life because I don't know about you guys when when I'm not connected like I think I should be connected I get a little fidgety it's almost like man and you have to make a decision say a decision you have to make a decision all right that i'm gonna get back to that place i'm gonna get back to that place where i'm gonna spend time with my father so i want to encourage you at times you know one way that you can get back is by just starting in the word and allowing the holy spirit all right to talk to you and reveal things to you this is my journey to restoration. So I'm getting back in that word deeply and allowing the Holy Spirit to talk to me. And then what the Holy Spirit reveals to me, that's what I take to the Father. Okay? How many of you guys, if we want to be a little transparent this morning, if you want to step out here and be vulnerable with me, how many of you guys have been struggling in your prayer life? Okay, we got several people, right? And as you go through seasons like that, you go through seasons like that. But we love God so much, right? We love God so much, and he loves us so much, right? Right? That because we love him, we're going to go back to him, right? He's, he's the vine, and we're the branch, and we realize I can't do nothing, 
nothing without being connected to the vine. So, Father, Lord, we pray. Lord, we're coming before you, us, your body of believers. And this is our desire that you would help us, Lord, for our prayer life to be restored. We want our prayer life to be restored. We want to have, Lord, that sweet, that deep, that intimate communion with you, Father God. And Lord, we thank you that you are an amazing father. Lord, I see, Lord, even in the parable of the lost son, where the son, Lord, left your presence. He left your presence, Lord God, and, and life got a little rocky for him. But then he came to his senses. And Lord, he went back home and you were right there. You were right there. Matter of fact, you ran toward him. So, Lord, I see, Lord, you're you running toward individuals, Lord God. And as the song says, Lord God, that life is in you. You are the one that gives us life. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for restoring our prayer life, for causing life to resurrect in us this morning, Lord God. So we thank you for that reconnection. We thank you for that reconnection. Say reconnection. Reconnection, Lord, we thank you for reconnecting us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Now you got to do something now. You have to do something, right? You just can't pray that prayer and then not do anything, right? You got to go home, all right, get in your word and start that prayer again, and he's going to meet you right where you are, amen? Amen. You guys may have your seat. Thank you guys so much for joining us and leading us in worship this morning. If you can direct your attention to the screens, we have a couple of announcements for you. Welcome back. Remember, if you have been fully vaccinated, you are not required to wear a mask. Women, Join us on July 9th as we continue to study the book of Galatians, one of Apostle Paul's most passionate letters on how to live in the guidance and power of the Spirit. Remember, this Her Time Summer Bible Study will be held every second Saturday of the month from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Please don't do that, all right? Because she's clumsier than all get out, I'm telling you. So I told her, Julie, you just stay right there. Don't move. All right, go ahead, Julie. <laughs> yeah, she has the red mic. Uh, so I can't talk. But it's, but it's Catalyst Week, I have to. Yeah, you got to And I have to fall no, somewhere. No, no. All right, so you heard it. Be healed, be free. And I just want to say... Um, that is what the Lord in prayer told our JLK team when we asked, what do you want released this year over our region? He said, be healed, be free, and release the sound of Jubilee. Release the sound of your testimonies. Release the sound of freedom. And so this is our week. This is the time once a year when we step into something larger than ourselves, right? We are at Trenches have been equipped all the time and is part of our mission to um, 
everywhere we are going, enhance the kingdom, be ambassadors. Well, this is our this is our week to do it with the larger body of Christ. And so um, there's I'll have a table outside and back. Um, don't leave without without seeing me. We're outside. I'll, I'll get you. But um, it does start off July 10th with. Am I holding it wrong? Yeah, you're good. With one worship down at Arcadia this year, and he doesn't say it, but the, um, Pastor James and J.P. Saucer are going to be leading us into some special prayer times there, um, getting gathering everyone there to be praying into freedom um, areas, freedom from unbelief in particular, because um, we are believing. We have to pray for that first. So bring your family, bring your friends, come early. Quise will be there at 3 and then it's going to be amazing, but we, we need those marching orders on July 10th. And then the rest of the week, there's two sites a night all over the community. Um, two special ones you might check out is that we'll be partnering with Changed in Christ at two different sites in particular. But then as trenches, <laughs> Thursday, July 14th, we are going to be down on East Main. We're helping at the site at East Main and Fairbanks. And we chose that this year to get further down back into that neighborhood because it's right by the Roosevelt Apartments that we've been called to. So um, we need all of you, young, old, um, all ages. And I want to say the women are doing great signing up. We need men. I'm just going to be honest. We need some men because there's young men out there that need to see the men. And, and see them, and and they're waiting. Appointments are there. Uh, so anyway, um, God's setting it up, and we need we need to meet the appointment. So we'll see you sign up today. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So just to. Um, reiterate and, and encourage. Um, I don't know why this is, but it just is, is, you know, the women have signed up and for, for whatever reason, it goes like this over me and say, I don't know why that is, but we want to encourage the brothers, All right? If you're anointed, filled with the Holy Ghost, show up. Okay. You know, kind of schedule us in and, and participate. Also, you have you have in your hand, JD, he gave you a few tickets, you know, and if you look at these tickets, they are actually invite tickets, you know, so we gave you a couple because we know that you're out there on your platform and sometimes people might say, man, tell me a little bit about your church or, you know, I'm, I've been thinking about going to church. You can invite an individual by just giving them this ticket and we set this ticket up. You know, I, I love how it's set up. You're in the right hand of Christ, so you have that seat. And then we can join together on your particular rows, right? And your section is the body of Christ, right? That's your section. And the gate is narrow. The gate is narrow. It's, it's, it's not wide. It's narrow. So we want to invite people to start worshiping with us here at Trenches. So you have a couple of tickets for that. So... Let's get ready to transition um, for the mess today. And um, I'm going to have a friend of mine, a daughter of mine, come up and she's going to introduce her dad, Shalibria. Come on up, Shalibria. Y'all give it up for Shalibria. Yeah. We some, look at look how he looking. Ah. I know. Hello, church. How y'all doing today? My name is Shalibria Thurba. I'm going to be reading off my phone because it's a lot to say. Um, today, I'll be presenting someone that has played a huge role in my life. I would not be standing here today um, to tell you all about this amazing person had he not accepted me into his family. Um, my dad, Eli Kim Thorpe, <laughs> um, he, he wears so many hats. Um, he is, number one, a child of God, a husband. He is a father of five beautiful children, four beautiful grandchildren. Um, he is a reverend, an elder, an author of the book called Transforming a Life of Struggle into a Life of Fortune. He is currently studying for his master's in business administration. He is a true inspiration to me and my siblings. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, he has taught me what a phenomenal man looks like. 
Definitely taught me the importance of having morals and principles and integrity, character, perseverance, um, the importance of being saved and having a relationship with God. Uh, and most of all, the, taught me the importance of my soul. He spent a lot of time giving me lectures back in the day that I didn't appreciate back then, but now that I have children of my own, I can definitely recall on and you know remember. Um, he constantly poured into me and my siblings and gave us all the tools that we necessarily needed for life and to be able to get, navigate this life. Eli came to me as a hero. He saved me from the foster care system. He has given me a forever family. He has introduced me to Jesus and shown me what a man after God's own heart looks like. And I used to think he was a robot because he was how close to perfect he was <laughs> growing up. Um, I know he would just stay up all night working really hard, studying and still taking care of us during the day. He did not miss a beat. Um, I'm just so happy to present this man to you guys today, Saints. Um, he's so awesome. My father like him for I almost cried, I almost. But my children often say, Dad, you don't ever cry. I do, but it's in my private moments. But uh, first of all, I wanna thank my daughter for that um, beautiful introduction. I appreciate it uh, to my wife of 25 years who is here supporting me, amen. She's the one that introduced me to, to, to God. And ever since then, my life has been revolutionized in a sense. Um, so, and I keep climbing, as Paul says, I'm just trying to press toward the mark, amen. P to Pastor Harris and First Lady Harris, thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, teach today um, before you. And I wanna say amen to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I wanna begin in scripture out of Matthew chapter 16, you'll find that this is going to be a familiar verse to some of us. Matthew chapter 16, and I'll start reading, and I'm going to be reading the English translation of the Aramaic, or they call it the Peshitta text. Uh, but these words will be very similar to what you have in it, whatever text you have today, whether it be New King James or whatever. But I'll start at verse 19, Matthew 16, starting at verse 19. It says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then I'm going to skip down to verse 23. You can read verses 22 to 22 uh, in the interest of time. In verse 23, it says, but he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not thinking of the things of God, but of men. Then Jesus said in verse 24 to his disciples, he who wishes to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever, for whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For now, would a man be benefited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, and then he will reward each man according to his works. Truly I say to you, there are men who stand here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom. Amen? Now, I want to preach for a moment. A a sermon titled, Harnessing the Power of Heaven in Your Life. Or if I wanted to subtitle it, I would say, How to Harness the Power of Heaven in Your Life. And the reason why this sermon title for me is so important because oftentimes we decree and declare that we are Christians, but when we say that we're Christians, there are other things that are going on in our life that don't look particularly like the scripture that we say we preach and teach. So today, what I want to do is I want to encourage you today 
and help you unlock your potential. And not necessarily your potential, but the potential of God that's in you. Because in this particular scripture, God and Jesus is speaking to Peter about how he's going to unlock his potential for something that I'm going to highlight later in the scripture. Amen. And so today I want to talk about how when we think about our own lives, we have struggles at times in terms of deciphering and decoding our purpose or destiny. It is often elusive due to our inability to truly unlock the keys of the kingdom of heaven in our lives. As a result, many doors of blessings and opportunities are bolted short, bolted shut because we haven't identified the keys that will unlock the right door to the promises of God. Or we use the incorrect key to unlock the doorway to the kingdom of heaven. The enemy is so deceptive, at times we mistake the keys of the kingdom of heaven when in reality we are in possession of keys to the domain of darkest, darkness. But I have come to declare that Revelation 3, 7 says, what God opens, no man can shut. And what God shuts, no man can open. And there's something about that particular scripture that you should be shouting about because when you know that you're connected to the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and you know that you have the power to unleash the power of God in you, you know that there's some things that you can't do that the enemy thinks that others could do. Because now the power and the harnessing power of God is working in you. You ought to be praising God right now because there were some times in your life where there was the favor of God in your life and the enemy didn't understand why you had favor in your life. There were some things that the enemy tried to have you stumble on, but because of the favor of God, you knew that you were able to propel yourself forward. There was something that was going on in your life, but the favor of God allowed you to walk over your enemies because he said he would make your enemies your footstools. He said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every lying tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. That's the kind of favor that we have when we unlock the power of heaven that's in our life. That's the kind of power. He said, when your enemy comes one way, he said he'll, he'll make them flee seven ways. I'm more than a conqueror. If God be for me, who can be against me? That's why you should shout today because you've had some favor of God that was operating in your life when man said he was trying to shut the door. God said, no, I'll open the door for you. You had a position and man said, no, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't qualified for that position. But God opened the door and said, well, walk on through that door and gave you favor for that position. Hmm. So I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to really realize this importance of unleashing and unlocking and harnessing the power of God in your life. So as we transition in the scripture, I, wanna, I want you to really look at reading Matthew 16, starting at verse 13 through 28. Now, in Matthew 16, verse 30, 13, Jesus makes a very, oh, he asked a question, even though he already knew the answer to a question. He was trying to test his disciples. And in the scripture, in Matthew 16 through about 13, through about 18, somewhere around there, he says, who do men say that I am? And they were like, well, maybe you could be Elijah, John the Baptist, or one of the prophets. But then there was a revelation that Peter had received. And he said, well, you are the son. The, you are the Christ, the son of the what? Living God. And then now we start to see a discourse that is occurring between Jesus and Peter. All right. I don't want you to miss this. So through 13 through verse about 23, 24, there's a discourse that is happening between Peter and Jesus. Now, Peter has this great revelation. He says, you are the son, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And now look at the, what happens in the first response here, because it's important that if we're going to harness the power of heaven in our life, we have to know how to channel the kingdom of God for our life. 
in verse 19, he goes on to say, I will give you, notice that I will give is a promise. I will give you, it's a future promise that he's trying to highlight to Peter. I will give you, that's the promise. Then he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now notice that in the, in the scripture, he doesn't say key, he says what? He says keys. It must be something about why God or Jesus would give the, you the plural form of the word key instead of using key. He says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus must have understood that there must be something necessary that if you want to unlock all of the potential of heaven in your life, you need more than one key. You see it? All right. So there's the promise in the scripture. And then notice that in the scripture, he says that I will give you the keys to the uh, I will give you keys of the kingdom of heaven, not to the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven. And oftentimes what we'll do is we'll quote the scripture saying, I will give you keys to the kingdom of heaven. No, that's incorrect. He says, I will give you keys of the kingdom of heaven. Notice the difference. The preposition to is something different than the preposition of. Let me highlight what preposition to means. He says, the two usually shows the direction of something moving towards. When you use the word of, the preposition of of usually shows a connection or a belonging. So what Jesus was trying to highlight to Peter is that you weren't simply moving in the direction, but I was going to help you connect to the kingdom because you belong to the kingdom because you are a father and a son and, and a child of God. And I need you to understand that when you unlock the keys to the kingdom of heaven, you're not just unlocking them just for any reason. He's saying that you belong there. That's your birthright. That's your inheritance. And many of us need to walk as if we worthy of the inheritance that God said we are to have. So let me unpack the scripture a little bit more. Now, when Aramaically, when you talk about keys, Keys sim symbolize power and trust. And when you have power and trust, it means that you have been entrusted with spiritual authority and you've been entrusted with unlimited authority. So when he says, I give you the keys, he's saying, I give you complete authority as overseer over my affairs. He says, I'm giving you complete authority as overseer of my affairs. The same power that God gave to Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus is saying, I'm giving it to you, Peter, so that when I leave this earth at, at the cross at Calvary, you're going to have authority to be able to have um, to be able to be have authority as overseer over my affairs. The person with the keys are empowered to buy and to sell, to lend and to collect debts, to forgive and to discipline workers, and sign and reject agreements. So when we talk about the keys of the kingdom, he's saying, I'm giving you spiritual authority. Now, kingdom, remember when I taught, oh, some time ago. Remember I said kingdom of God is Malkutat the Alaha. Malkutat the Alaha. Malkutat meaning kingdom. Now, when Jesus uses kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, He's using those words interchangeably. They basically mean the same thing. Malkotat the Alaha means the council of God. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is Malkotat Dasmaya. And when we talk about what the kingdom of heaven means, it's a universal state, a reign, a peace and harmony. The expression kingdom of heaven also implies a kingdom without boundaries. It's a heavenly kingdom, is a spiritual domain, and is not ruled by human beings. The reign of heaven symbolizes the universal establishment of what? Justice, peace, love, harmony, goodness in the consciousness of their, each individual. So when Jesus was talking with Peter, he was infusing him with something to understand that this power that I'm giving to you that you're going to harness in the future is not about your personal elevation. It's about the spiritual kingdom being enhanced. 
as we talk about here about enhancing the kingdom, it's not about you, it's about the king. So then he goes on, then I give you power to bind and to loose. To bind and to loose. To bind means what? To prohibit. To loose means to what? Permit. So when he, was in, when he was working with Peter, he was also giving him the authority to be able to permit and prohibit things because he was overseer over God's affairs. Now, when God gives you that kind of power, do you have the power to permit and to prohibit things in your life? And the reason why some of us are struggling with our Christianity is because we don't you know how to prohibit and permit the right things. Bind into loose, because we say it so cavalier. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of, of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, I'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll be loosed in heaven. And we don't really recognize what's really happening here when Jesus is speaking to Peter. Amen. So, Pastor Harris, come up here for a second. I, I need to show you something. <laughs> Now, notice this. This is where becoming a channel for the kingdom of heaven actually happens. Or if you want to say a conduit. Now, he said, I will give you the keys. Now, you keep my, you can give my keys back to me. <laughs> now, notice what's happening here. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What I want you to catch here is that when Jesus was making that statement to Peter, there was a transfer of power. There was an exchange of power. Now, possession changed. Ownership didn't. Because God still owns the kingdom. But stewardship changed. So what he was doing with Peter was like, you don't own the kingdom of heaven, but I'm going to transfer the power of God that's in me through you. And now you can be the steward to handle my and oversee my affairs when I leave this earth. And what God is trying to tell you is that when he gives you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, he's asking, he's telling you that I'm giving you power so you can steward the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm. And most of us don't know how to steward anything. We ask God for many blessings, but we never understand how to really truly walk in the blessings because we haven't been stewarding the things that he's been given to us. Now notice, keep the keys right there, just keep the keys. Now when Jesus gives you keys, he gives you originals. When the enemy gives you keys, he gives you copies. They're fakes. It may look like you can open the key to the kingdom of heaven with his keys, but you can never will. But when you get the kingdom of heaven keys from God, you can open up every door. And notice, notice, and sometimes God will give me a second key, which is still an original. Because if I lose the first key, he's so good, he'll give me a second key. Amen. Because sometimes we can find ourselves locked out from the blessings of God because we've lost the original key that gave, God gave us. But yet, because he's so good to us, he gives us a second key so that we can open up the door to the blessings of God that he still has waiting on us. That's how you harness the power of heaven in your life. That's why you got to be, thank you. <laughs> That's why you have to understand and be able to discern that the enemy will only give you a copy. He will only give you a fake. But when you're in the kingdom of God, he'll give you the real thing. That's why you got to be careful about people who talk about Christianity and giving you an altered version of the gospel. Because the version of the gospel I know is about a man named Jesus that went to Calvary and on the third day he rose with all power in his hands. Be careful of the copy you think you have. And this is why that, if, if I, I'm going to get real for just a quick second. So let me, let, me, let me take a drink. I got to take a drink. <sighs> Whew, yes. I'm 
I'm interested in our discourse in this country. And a lot of things that's going on in our country, we hide behind what we say is Christianity. And what ends up happening is that we will have individuals in high places and in low places giving us an altered version of Jesus. And what we do in this country is that we make decisions that look like it's the real thing according to scripture, but it's a fake. That's why you got to be careful about what you listen to that's not gospel. I don't care if it comes from a Democrat or Republican. Our word comes from the word of God. That's why I don't pay too much attention to people who try to tell me about the gospel because they don't know the gospel like I know the gospel. Because I know that I've been given the gospel as an original copy. So I, I, I think to myself, it's interesting that insurrectionists would say that they did this because of Christ. It's interesting that conservative Christians would say that while abortion may be a struggle for most of us, that we would strip away the rights of individuals and women when God has given us free choice. God has always made us free moral agents. It's interesting that people who enslaved minorities and African Americans would use scripture to act as if somehow script, uh, that enslavement was okay, according to scripture. See, this is why you have to be careful about what you listen to, because if you're not getting the unadulterated gospel, your mind will be filled with lies by the enemy. Point number two. Now, as Jesus is dealing with this, he gets into this verse 21 through 23, and then remember, Peter had a revelation. He said, uh, uh, like, Lord, you are the son of the living God. And then in verse 23, we see that J Jesus tells Peter, I rebuke you, basically. Now, notice the pivot in consciousness of Peter. Peter had a revelation in 19 or verse 17, 18, somewhere around there. Yeah, 18 or where was it? Okay, somewhere around there. Verse 16, Trump, trust me, 16. But then in verse 23, Peter it's in verse 21 through 23, Peter's trying to tell Jesus, I don't need you to go to the cross, basically. There's a pivot in consciousness for him. He had a revelation in Matthew 16, 16. Then we get to verse 23, and he says, I, 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 I don't, Jesus, I don't need you to go to the cross. Because remember, Peter had, a, had an altered version of what he thought the Messiah would be. And so Jesus says, but he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not thinking of the things of God, but of men. Now, Satan, in this particular scripture, means to, Aramaically means, is a root of the word sata. It means to miss the mark, to slip, to slide, to deviate from one's course in life. So when Jesus rebukes Peter, he was essentially saying, why are you trying to stop me from reaching my destiny? And when Satan shows up in your life, guess what he's trying to do? He's trying to stop you from reaching your destiny. And what he will do is put all kind of things in your, in your path to deviate you from the course. But thank God for the GPS, the word of God that allows us to get back on course so that we don't deviate from God's plan in our life. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a good and expected end. That's the kind of God I know. So he's telling him, why would you, why are you trying to deviate me from my, um, my, from my destiny? That's why you need to understand. When you're under assault, it simply means that your destiny represents a threat to the enemy. When you are under assault, it only means that 
your destiny represents a threat to the enemy. Do you know why uh, the, Satan kept coming to, uh, to coming after Jesus? Even before Jesus started his ministry, he was in, the, remember, he was 40 days in the mountain, fasting, praying. And remember, uh, Satan came to tempt him before he started his ministry. Many, maybe some of you got ministry that's waiting to be unlocked in you that God's trying to harness in you, but you haven't gotten there because you're in a test and a battle right now. I want you to know that because you're in that battle and that test, that means that your destiny is right before you. And if you can just understand the power of God in you, you'll know that there's a destiny waiting on you on the other side of that trouble. But you got to be one to go through the trouble and rebuke Satan and let him know that you will not allow him to deviate you from your course. So you got to conform to the kingdom of, of heaven as a second point. And verse 24 through 26, it's, it, I'm going to read it real quick. Then, it said, then Jesus said to his disciples, he who wishes to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life, his life shall lose it. He shall lose his life. And whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. For now, for how would a man be benefited if he would gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul now take up in this take up his cross in this particular verse of scripture here you come <laughs> means that you are willing to die or risk your life now let me help y'all out because when we say you're willing to die now i want you to understand the context understand the context jesus is not asking us to abandon our life He's not asking you to go and do something to risk your life, per se. What he's trying to help the disciples understand and Peter to understand that if you're going to follow after me, you got to be willing to risk your life because of the gospel put, is going to put him at the cross. And that when he leaves, he's gonna, they're going to have to deal with the fallout of that, and it may put them at risk if they continue to further the gospel message. Amen. And we know that in Scripture, the gospel message continues to be furthered by Peter. Amen. Because did, Peter did in Acts chapter 2 in the establishment of the church. He preached at the day of Pentecost and 3,000 were saved. Amen. And so and then the first word in the first word save in Aramaic is this word called high. So in this particular scripture, what Jesus is really trying to help us understand is that he's trying to get us to understand high means life force or energy. OK, I'm going to get to that. All right. He's talking about how you need to subjugate the personal self for the for the I am the greater I am in you, because you can't do this without the great I am working through you. That's how you harness the power of God in your life. He's saying, I need you to harness the power of God. I need you to subject and subjugate the personal self so that I can do a greater work in the God self that's in you that I'm trying to tap and to open so that you have full access to the kingdom of heaven. It's called high life force or energy. He's saying, if you if you subjugate that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my life force, energy, life energy, my force, the power of God in you, the Holy Spirit, if you want to say it, it, working in you so that you can be prepared to do the gospel work. The Aramaic word for lose says uh, is means that you can also go astray to be destroyed or falling into de decay. It roots suggests a process of self surrender. Something has grown to the further ex extent of its development and then surrenders itself in service to what is greater. So what we're saying is that we're surrendering ourselves to something that's even greater. And most of the time, we never reach our potential because we're unwilling to, to surrender ourselves to what is greater. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the what? In the world. That God in you is trying to push out through you so that you can do the greater in him. And that's why many of us as Christians, we can't, we can't heal nothing. We can't rebuke nothing. We can't change laws in this country. We can't change policies because we're not really operating according to the power that's in us. And we letting people that have an altered version of the gospel trying to tell us what the law should be when God met heaven and earth converged when Peter took the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He's trying to get Peter, trying to get his disciples to conform. And most of us don't want to conform. Remember scripture, Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that what? Good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You cannot be conformed if you don't submit your body and you change your thoughts.
So I want to kind of just highlight this spiritual principle for you because there's more to unpack in that scripture. That those who learn how to master themselves never, be in, never become enslaved by the enemy. If you learn how to master yourself, you never become enslaved by the enemy. And in verse 27 and 28, Jesus sort of caps this all off for us. And I want you to read it when you get a chance. But he starts to talk about this idea that the disciples shall not ever taste death. And the reason why he's doing that and, and having them understand what this is significantly about is that they would never die spiritually. Is that they would reach this level of immortality as he would. Because he cultivated the kingdom of God in him. That's my third point. He cultivated it. And because he cultivated it, he was allowed, his, his word and his message is as relevant today as it was yesterday. And what Jesus is trying us to get us to understand is that if you start to follow the principles of the word of God and you allow God to unlock the kingdom of heaven in you, then you will never die. You will live for eternity because you have left an imprint in society. You've left an imprint in humanity. And so that's why as, as we leave here today, that the tragedy of life is not death, but it is what dies inside of us while we live. No, the, the death is not about when you actually physically die. The most important death is what's happening inside of you. But I know a man named Jesus. He said, I'm going to come. I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to heal people. I'm going to liberate people. I'm going to bring Jews and Gentiles together. Women and men together. Because he wasn't a sexist. He wasn't a misogynist. He wasn't a racist. He wasn't a white supremacist. He wasn't an insurrectionist. He came from heaven to change humanity. And what God and Jesus is trying to teach us in this scripture is that we have the power to harness this same power in our life, the kingdom of heaven, Malkutat Dashmaya. Malkutat Dashmaya. And if we can get to that place where we fully surrender to the will of God for our life, I can guarantee you that you're going to do greater, larger, and bigger things. And you're not doing it by yourself. You're doing it with the power of God in you. Amen? And so I want you to know that Jesus, for those who are listening, Jesus wants to unlock your potential. He wants you to be a conduit for the kingdom. He wants you to he wants you to to submit to the kingdom. And he wants you to cultivate the kingdom in you so that you can cultivate the kingdom outside of you. But that cannot be done if you have not allowed Jesus Christ into your heart. He went to a cross. They beat him. They murdered him. They mocked him. They hung him on a rugged cross. And then he said, it is finished while he was on the cross. He knew his destiny. <laughs> he knew he had to go there. He was going to risk his life. But on the third day, scripture was fulfilled. He said, I got up with all power in my hand. And I want you to know that when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your heart and believe in your heart that he is raised him from the dead, that same power is in you. It cannot just simply be about saying or uttering the word, but you have to internalize it. You've got to let God cultivate that in you, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God in you. Jesus was always focused on the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. His whole message was focused on the kingdom of God and everything that flowed in the kingdom of God was love, peace, joy, justice, harmony. So it's impossible for us as Christians 
to not be harmonious with one another if we are supposedly in the kingdom of heaven. So, I want you to unlock your potential today. I feel God moving in a mighty way. And I ask that you will surrender your life to this moment. And that you don't have to be where you are right now. You don't have to you don't have to be enslaved by your trials and your tribulations. But I know a God that can get you up on the third day with all power in his hands. Amen. Amen. Thank you. teachers here in trenches. Amen. Um, so I want to encourage you to reflect back on that teaching. Um, it just lines up with what we're teaching here in the house. Um, my last word in my notes was repentance. You know, I just felt like, you know, when I get in those times where I don't take my rightful place in Christ, when I don't execute that, you know, I just, I just had to like, man, God, I'm sorry. Because he gives us these platforms, Thor, you know, and we're on these platforms for a reason. And it's not just to work and bring home a paycheck. It's to do kingdom work. It's to do, and I, I just feel like that we need to repent for developing and, and taking in the American Christian culture and being stuck, being stuck there and not allowing Right, what God has reclaimed for us, right, to move through us in a mighty way. So I just want us to take a, some time out, just just about a minute, man. I, and even if you don't think that you have to repent, still repent. Still, still, still repent. You know, some people think that they don't have to repent. All right, but you got to repent somewhere, right? So just take some time out, based upon that message, right. Repent, turn, and we're going to leave out of here walking in that, that kingdom authority that he's given us. And at the end, Thor pleaded. That's what the gospel tells us to do, to plead with mankind to be reconciled back to God. So if it's someone in the audience today and you like, I've never accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. You know, that word plead actually means to beg. So I'm begging you to be reconciled, restored back to the Father if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. We'll have a few individuals up front that will be willing to pray with you um, in that area. Last but not least, um, as we get ready to release you, is again, Thorpe, that just kind of leads us right up to where we're going to be next month. I've told you guys several times that I try to preach out of my experience. I try to preach out of my life, not necessarily develop a message, right? And I said a little bit about this is that I, I've been struggling in my prayer, 
right? And I'm trying to get back to that James Harris place in prayer, right? So I feel like if I've been struggling and you guys raise your hand is that you've been struggling also as a body. So next month we're going to be teaching on prayer, you know, and we're going to revisit the Lord's prayer. And the reason why we're going to revisit the Lord's prayer is because we want to make sure that that pattern of prayer doesn't become a, a, a religion or a ritualistic to you and to me and that we're just praying you know our father which are in heaven and there's no substance there's no meaning to it there's no faith behind it so we want to get in here together and go through this prayer next month and while we're teaching the prayer we're going to get into prayer groups right and we're going to apply what we've learned immediately now we're going to do that here at Trenches, but what we're hoping is going to happen is that what we equip you with will spill over into your life, will spill over into your job that you can call the kingdom of God, all right, to manifest in the areas where you work or at your home. You know, so we really want Trenches to be have this prayer culture. Miles Monroe says something that, and it just reiterated what I've been saying for a while, not to boast on myself. But the, the prayer ministry or the prayer time is the smallest group ever in the church. And I don't know why that is, all right? Maybe, all right, it's because prayer is a threat to the enemy. It's a threat to the enemy. And if he can keep, keep God's people out of his presence, out of God's presence, then he can continue to do what he's going to do in the earth without us taking our rightful place in prayer, right? So I really want our church. I don't want, I don't want you to miss a Sunday here and there next month. I want to ask you, right? I know that m m the majority of us is that we have like, okay, this is the days that I'm going to go to church on the first and third Sunday or the or the second and fourth Sunday, and then, you know, the other Sundays, you know, I'm going to be doing what I do, all right? I don't, I want to encourage you, don't miss next month. Get in here with us, right? Because we've said this before, man, it's not really healthy for you to ask for prayer for something in your life and you never pray about the thing that you're asking prayer for, if that makes sense, Right? That's called being lazy in your prayer life. You want someone else to pray for you instead of you praying for yourself, right? So we want to help you to be able to pray for yourself and also pray along with the body of Christ, right? So next month, right? Next month, that's going to be our focus, right? And I'm going to say this and get ready to let you guys go. Not only do we want women here, we want men here. Not only do we want the congregation here, we want leaders here. We want leaders over areas to be a part of the prayer because it, something happens when leadership is present, right? So we just don't want to push the congregation out there and then we're not doing anything as leaders, amen? So next month, let's stand. Great word, let's give it up for Thorpe again. Just amazing, 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 amazing word. Father, as we meditate on this word, you said that we would prosper and we would experience success. So we thank you for ministering and teaching through your son. Lord God, you love us so much, Lord, that you will give us another key if we lose the first one. Your mercy is new every morning. So as we leave here today, Lord, help us to walk in the power and the authority that you have given us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You guys are released. Give a few people a, a hug. And if you want to, come um, encourage your brother in Christ for delivering that amazing message this morning. Welcome back.
Remember, if you have been fully vaccinated, you are not required to wear a mask. Women, join us on July 9th as we continue to study the book of Galatians, one of Apostle Paul's most passionate letters on how to live in the guidance and power of the Spirit. Remember, this Her Time Summer Bible Study will be held every second Saturday of the month from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m.